Well, let's hope we're not talking about this 10 years from now. In 2008, the then Union Health Minister Anubani Ramdas had implemented the ban on smoking in public. Now, more than a year and a half later, his letter to the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu has put the issue under the spotlight again. A letter from Anbumani Ramadas urging the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister to strictly implement the smoking ban, voicing his concern over the dangers of passive smoking and surrogate cigarette ads. He pointed out that the ban was not implemented in a full-fledged way. He also says that Tamil Nadu constitutes 10% of the national cigarette sales and that the state ranks second in cigarette sales in the country. வந்து எல்லா கடைகளிலும் பொது இடங்களிலும் வந்து தடை செய்யப்பட்ட ஒரு போர்டு வைக்கணும் யார்கிட்ட சோ கம்ப்ளைண்ட் பண்றதுங்கிறது ஒரு இன்னொரு இரண்டாவது போர்டு வைக்கணும் மூணாவது வந்து அந்த எந்த இடங்களிலும் பொது இடங்களில் தீப்பெட்டியோ ஆஸ்திரியோ ப்ரொவைட் பண்ணக்கூடாதுன்னு சட்டம் இருக்கு இதை வந்து முறையாக செயல்படுத்தப்படவில்லை அதனால இதையும் செயல்படுத்தணும் மூன்றாவதாக பார்த்தீங்கன்னாக்கா பள்ளிகளுக்கு வந்து நூறு மீட்டருக்குள்ள எங்கேயும் வந்து புகையிலை பொருட்கள் விற்கக்கூடாதுன்ற தடை இருக்கு அப்படி இருந்த போது எல்லா இடங்களிலுமே பள்ளிகளுக்கு அருகிலேயே வந்து உங்களுக்கு போர்டோட வச்சு சில புகையிலை பொருட்கள் விற்றுக்கிட்டு இருக்காங்க ஸோ இதையும் வந்து முழுமையாக But the state health department has retaliated. They say Tamil Nadu has fared very well in not only controlling tobacco use but also creating awareness. The ban on uh, tobacco products uh, uh, is an exemplary activity we are doing and outstanding performance in Tamil Nadu. Almost about 19 lakhs as a fine we have collected and uh, the, uh, about uh, 17,500 people have been fined. So that is uh, one aspect. And uh, we are doing, you know, the awareness program um, for the people, public, and uh, um, the educational institutions like universities, colleges. Despite such claims, the state has to come to terms with some bitter truths. The fine of rupees 200 is less than the cost of five packs of cigarettes. Despite the ban on cigarette ads, surrogate ads like this one continue. The Indian government is set to make more than 15,000 crores annually from the tobacco industry. However, the country spends double that amount in treating diseases caused by tobacco-based products. The thin line between public space and private space has allowed offenders to get away. Clearly, despite the achievements, it seems to be a case of a slip between the stub and the lip. In Chennai, with Nithila Minal Shah, NDTV Hindu. Taking forward this anti-smoking campaign, Anubani Ramdas has written a letter to actor Ajit urging him to drop scenes of smoking in his film Asal. In a letter addressed to Ajit, the producer and the director of the film, Dr. Anubani Ramdas said that these scenes would influence the younger generation to follow unhealthy practices. Despite repeated assurances from the government, there seems to be no respite for Indian fishermen at high seas. This prompted close to 300 protesters to lay siege to the Tamil Nadu governor's residence, demanding his intervention. They were arrested and later released. And I assured him, of course, that the government of India will continue to do whatever it can. This latest assurance by the central government seems to have changed little on the ground or rather at sea. Fishermen of Rameshwaram have complained about fresh attacks by the Sri Lankan Navy. Reason enough for hundreds of fishermen led by the CPM tried to march to the Raj Bhavan to demand an immediate end to the attacks and deletion of certain provisions in the controversial Marine Fisheries Bill. <laughs> As the Mahinda Rajapakse government enters its second term, the Indian government says it's closely working with its Sri Lankan counterparts to protect Tamils and Indian fishermen. But politicians in Tamil Nadu are skeptical. The sea mines have been put near our, ter near our water borders. No other country would have permitted this. It is a challenge to the sovereignty and security of the country. Therefore, I don't expect uh, Rajapakse to behave with good intention. So, Indian government has to be very, very cautious. With Bureau Imports, Shabir Ahmad for NDTV Hindu. Police chased away farmers agitating for the release of irrigation water in Sivaganga district. Nearly 2,000 farmers from Mana Madurai, along with CPI, CPM and AIADMK cadres, staged a roadblock on the Madurai-Rameshwaram highway. 
The farmers demanded the opening of the Vaigai Dam by the Public Works Department for irrigation. When they refused to disperse, the police had to use what they called mild force. Nearly 100 farmers were injured because of this and all the protesters, including women, were arrested. Despite a 1,100 crore project to speed up passport delivery in the country, the government has let down its citizens. The result, thousands of people have to spend days standing in long queues to get their passports. The perfect setting for touts to make a killing. Never mind if the passport isn't guaranteed. Here's a sting operation by our investigative reporter Sai Manish outside the regional passport office in Shastri Bhavan. This is a scene you may have encountered at the passport office. Serpentine queues, long waiting hours and loads of paperwork. But that's not all. Those who don't want to join the queue end up meeting these touts, who have thrived on the government's cumbersome procedures to set up a booming business at the passport office in and around Shastri Bhavan. Now consider this tout. Her official occupation, juice vendor. But she makes much more money by squeezing desperate passport seekers who want to get their job done fast. Well, useless as it may sound, this woman promises to deliver a passport within 10 days. The price tag? About twice the cost of a normal passport. So the ordinary, desperate passport applicant, when confronted with the prospect of standing in these long lines, falls into the trap of the tout. The tout targets his customer selectively. The exasperated, confounded look is the first indication. And there are even cases of touts running away with the money. The government has already inked a 1,100 crore deal for the launch of the Passport Seva project that aims to provide passports to everyone in just three days. But clearly, the External Affairs Ministry's laxity in implementing the project has given rise to these touts, who prey on these passport seekers, all desperate to get that blue book in their hands. In Chennai, with Sai Manish, Nithila for NDTV Hindu. Stay with us. We'll be back with more news and updates shortly.